Hi, this is MXUX. This is a quick video on some new information, some leaks and some other information that's come out on the Lordstown Endurance after the Hindenburg report. So let's just get going with this and move on to the slides. All right, we got some information on the battery. There's going to be a eight year warranty. I have a little, little more information on this uh, later. The battery will be replaceable and will be upgradable. So it's not structural uh, like the Tesla. Uh, what they're thinking of doing now with Lordstown is they may take it back and uh, use it uh, in residential uh, applications, you know, like the Powerwall for Tesla. Uh, but uh, I think it's pretty cool. They're gonna be able to replace the battery. Uh, it's gonna be grid capable and bi-directional as an option. So in other words, uh, you'll be able to feed power back in the grid, I guess, as, and uh, you'll be able to power a house with it and so forth. Uh, you guys can look that up for sure. But uh, that's some new, uh, I think the, uh, the fact that it will be replaceable is a big deal and upgradable as new battery technology comes into play. All right, uh, on the body of the Endurance, uh, there, there'll be uh, variations. They have what's called a, a bed delete body, which is the king cab only uh, without a body. So you'll be able to put a flatbed body on it or, uh, you know, the toolbox with the tool rack uh, with the ladder rack on top or uh, I would imagine a small bucket, uh, bucket uh, truck, uh, uh, bucket uh, assembly on there or whatever. Um, there's going to be a towing and a trailer package. Uh, it is going to be snow plow capable. And it's going to have, uh, uh, they're working with the people that uh, build the uh, snow plow uh, fittings to put the plow on uh, for the Silverado. So they'll have a kit that uh, you'll be able to set a, a snow plow on it. So uh, this is exciting. It doesn't have to be a pickup. It can be anything you want. And uh, of course, uh, you got the uh, snow plow. So there you go. All right, the initial run uh, for the truck is going to be for fleets and it's going to be a work. It's going to be a work truck. It's going to have vinyl seats and rubber floor mats and it's going to have limited options. I personally like the idea of vinyl seats and floor mats because it's a truck. You know, duh. Anyway, uh, but this is the initial run, and this is for the fleets. Again, I don't have a problem with that. The rest of the interior is going to be pretty much the same. Uh, what they're going for is an affordable work truck. It's not a lifestyle vehicle like the um, Tesla uh, Cybertruck. Um, so it's uh, this is like, I remember back in the day when you bought a pickup truck. Guess what? You got final seats. You got, you got rubber floor. It's great. This is great. This is like a throwback. I, I personally like it. Three-year, 36,000-mile 36 36, bumper-to-bumper warranty and an eight-year, 100,000-mile 100, 100, uh, battery warranty, uh, which is pretty much standard in the uh, industry now. Again, with that swappable battery. All right, these are some more body specs. They've been testing it, and... Uh, the truck go uh, uh, work in three feet of water. So anybody that's thinking of going across any streams or anything, there you go, three feet of water. Uh, they're they're building their own uh, proprietary heating and cooling system for the battery. They're not going to use any uh, anybody else's system, I guess. But uh, anyway, this is supposed to be a pretty big deal. They're not going to have a proprietary charging plug. I don't know the truck, uh, the the plug variations, but it's going to be one of the standard plug variations. They're going to have level one, level two, and DC fast charging. Uh, so, you know, uh, they're going to use uh, third-party chargers. Uh, they're not going to put their own charging network in. So, but it'll be a universal uh, kind of charging setup. For all you guys down there in Texas, you can lift it. You can put a lift kit on the truck. 
Cool. All right. Some more body specs. They're going to have an infotainment system. I don't know if it's going to be Android Play, Apple Play, or whatever, uh, but that's part of the deal. Uh, they're going to have over-the-air updates, uh, you know, just like Tesla. They're going to have telemetrics. It's going to give the status uh, and send the information back to the fleet headquarters as far as the repairs, the motors, you know, if there's any problem, uh, most likely location of the vehicle and uh, speeds or whatever the case may be. But it's going to be a connected vehicle. Uh, the vehicle, I guess, with that bi-directional uh, option, is capable uh, at this point with the battery capable of powering a home for a day and a half. Hey, everybody down there in Texas, day and a half. And they're doing, uh, they're still in the process. They're they're at, they're at the betas. They're almost there. They're doing improvements along the way. So uh, it's it's about ninety percent there, but changes coming as well okay now you know this chick with the uh, fake accent she's talking about making fun of the motors and I don't want to get into it but anyway she's ill-informed they did 20 20,000 miles of in-house testing on the motors the hub motors the manufacturers done a million miles of testing and they've done drop tests, and they've submerged them in water, and they've submerged them in mud, and they've done shock tests on them. They've done all kind of stuff. So there's a million, million miles of testing on the motors. And they've done 20,000 miles of testing in-house on the motors, on the, the mule and the, and the prototype truck. So that's 1 million, 20,000 miles of testing. There's one moving part in the motors. That's the rotor. That's it. It's the hub that the wheel goes on. Uh, now this came through in the uh, in the conference call, in the earnings call, which I want to do a video on. I don't know if I'll have time. And the Goldman Sachs analyst goes, "Well, when you get a flat, do you have to do you have to take the motor off?" People, no, you do not have to take the motor off to fix a flat, the, the hub of the wheel fits right on the hub motor, just like a regular, it's like a brake drum. Look at it as like a brake drum. You know how you built a bolt a tire on a brake drum? That's how you do it. That's how you take it off. Another analyst said, well, are you going to have a spare tire with a spare motor on it? No, you don't, you don't need the motor. That's not how it works. The motor's part of the truck. It's like a it, just look at it like, and I, I plan on doing another video on this as well, as a drum brake, okay? It's the same kind of thing. Imagine a 62 Buick with drum brakes on it. Not disc brake, drum brakes. That's what it is, okay? I could not believe that these analysts from these Wall Street bankers are asking these questions. It was shocking to me. It just shows you how ill-informed everyone is. You know, these guys are so busy engineering this truck and building this truck and getting it out in September. You know, no one's getting a word on all these things. There's just three electrical connections to the motor. And this is some news that I got from my sources. They have tested, uh, you know, the prototype, I guess, in the betas on the track. They, they have tested them up to 120 miles an hour. So they're going to limit these fleet trucks electronically to 80 miles an hour, but this truck is capable of going 120 miles an hour at least. Okay. Now this is uh, the Lawrence, Lawrencetown Motors uh, Endurance versus an ICE, an internal combustion engine truck. So they say there's going to be $20,000 in uh, total cost of ownership over the life of the truck. So it's already $20,000 cheaper based on that. It's going to have a 250 mile range, which is five times with a, what an internal combustion truck is. 72% uh, lower maintenance costs. Again, no transmission, no oil changes, no spark plugs, regenerative braking, lowers uh, braking uh, repairs. Uh, you know the drill on this. They, uh, they have done simulated crash tests, and they're, they're going to do the real crash tests on the, uh, on the beta. I guess it's the beta. Uh, 
but uh, the beta body. But they're they're already near. I mean, I think they already have a five star in the. In the uh, uh, don't quote me on that. In the simulated computer generated crash test, they're expecting a five five star crash rating. You know, you got the bed in the back, you got the front in the front. I mean, this thing. I'm sure it's going to get a five. Well, uh, it's four wheel drive, uh, five thousand three hundred uh, pounds. It's the lightest full size fleet pickup truck there is. And with the uh, motor governed to 80, it's uh, a 5.5 second, uh, zero to 60 mile per hour uh, speed. And as I said, it can go faster. And it's got the fewest moving parts of any pickup. Now, I just want to say, I was looking at, uh, I think it was a Ford hybrid electric ice truck. Oh, my God. It looked the schematic of it looked like a fighter jet. I mean, they got an electric motor in the back, and then they got a battery to the side, then they got an ice motor, then they got a transfer case. I mean, there must have been 10,000 parts, additional parts, just for putting this electric motor into this F-150. So this this thing has four moving parts, the wheel motors, as far as the drivetrain goes. That's it. Fantastic design. All right. Some more specs, uh, tightest turning radius of any full-size pickup, King Cab, 2,000-pound uh, uh, payload max at this time. It, you know, it might change, doubtful. Towing capacity in this model, the first run is 7,500 pounds max. Could change, not likely. 20 cubic foot frunk uh, in the front. It's waterproof, and it has an outlet in it, okay? And uh, what they're saying is it's a familiar form factor with a radical drivetrain and battery, okay? And uh, now they're still working on the battery, and they're, and they're putting the battery plant in. You see they got it running, uh, but they're talking about 109 kilowatts to 117 kilowatt battery. Still in development. They're getting the cells just like Tesla. They're putting the, the uh, battery pack together themselves. And again... Uh, this battery pack is going to be removable and interchangeable. Now, I don't think it's going to be swappable. It's going to take a little more than, you know, just pulling in some bay and having a, a robot change it out. But it is going to be replaceable. So I think that's just a great option. I mean, you know, the truck could last a really long time under those conditions. Anyway, let's move on here. Uh, the motor, they have they have regen braking. Again, some of these analysts during the, the earnings call were asking, oh, will, will it have regen braking? These analysts, these Wall Street analysts, I thought these guys were, uh, you know, Jack the Lad. They, they don't even know what the hell they're talking about. Anyway, uh, not only does it have it regen, it's really good at stop and go driving with these particular motors. And again, you don't have all that inertia and all these moving parts having to spin up to move the wheels. You got, you know, you can understand how that works. Uh, very rugged four-wheel drive system. So it's it each wheel each wheel has its own controller, and then there's a master controller, I'm sure, for the for the for the truck itself. But uh, they have uh, computer-controlled traction, uh, you know, ABS system. Uh, if you can see from some of my other video, if you watch my other videos on Lordstown, I got a few of them. If you watch them, guys, you'll understand all these things. This torque vectoring that I went over in detail, this is a fantastic thing. This computer controlled uh, motor is going to give you this torque vectoring, which is something they use on uh, F1 race cars, okay? And it's going to have, obviously, electronic stability control, which is going to tie all these systems together. Uh, this, you know, this is going to be a, a, a really safe vehicle, I believe. I mean, between all these computer uh, controls and individual motors and having it each win wheel individually controlled uh, and, the cr and the crumple zones, I mean, a really super, super uh, safe vehicle. <clears throat> anyway, uh, the people that have driven it, so it handles like a sports car, which it should because it is like a sports car. It's got low center of gravity. It's got uh, the, the four-wheel drive. It's got the torque vectoring. It's got the traction control. It's like an F1 car. 
Okay, there's and the people that have talked said there's there's no sway in the body when it's turning, and they said there's no issues with it rolling over in a crash or anything like that because the center of gravity is so low. And you can look at the Tesla crash tests, the same same type of thing. Uh, gross weight, I I don't know what GVWR is. It's six six thousand pounds. That's not final. I think that's the gross weight. I'm not sure what that figure is. You guys got to look that up. Uh, there's a towing receiver. Uh, the frame, uh, as they say, they say it's practically indestructible. But anyway, there'll be a, you know, probably I'm sure aftermarket towing receiver, but there's also going to be an option for a fleet to have a towing receiver installed during the manufacture. Day. Uh, regenerative braking is standard. Again, these Wall Street analysts. What does it do? Re I can't believe it. Okay, there's a 15 inch ground clearance on the truck. And again, for you guys in Texas, can be lifted. Any, basically, any lift kit you can put on a Silverado, which is my understanding, not from them, you can put on this truck. So I think that's pretty cool. I don't know. I, I think. Uh, I think the Rivian uh, isn't going to have this feature. I think the Rivian and the, uh, the Tesla truck are going to have an air suspension. Anyway, uh, you know, to keep talking, keep talking about the, the Tesla, uh, th this truck has a solid rear axle, and that's for towing. Tesla's going to have an independent rear suspension with the airbag suspension. And according to my research, I don't know how that, that's going to be a real feat of engineering. To get that to work with uh, with towing, anyway, that's what they say. And uh, they're gonna have onboard battery charging outlets, so you could turn uh, charge your uh, work tools or whatever. 110 volt, 30 amp circuit right now. That's what they have planned. But uh, again, this is could be subject to change. But there's gonna be outlets on the truck, is what they're saying. Uh, now, this is uh, Lord Stein Motors versus Ford, Tesla, and Rivian. Well, first of all, Lord Stein Motors is going to have the first pickup truck. Uh, right now, Lord Stein has the capability to build more vehicles than either of these, any of these. Okay? Their plant is bigger. It's better. It was the number three plant in GM's crown. Okay? Uh I had some video later of this plant. I can't, I don't think anybody understands how cars are built, were built, how big this plant is. Anyway, Ford is building a special plant to build EVs. It's a small, it's like a sub plant, a plant in Detroit. Uh, Rivian, we still don't know. I've only, I got, I did a video on this. Uh, who will be the first pickup truck? You guys should look at it. Show the Rivian plant their hand building cards in the background. I don't know. Anyway, uh, Lord Stein Motors is going to be the first one out. It's going to have lower pricing. And uh, the hub motor drivetrain is a major, major advantage of the uh, Lord Stein Motors. Uh, I think this is going to be one of the keys. It's, I think it's the best drivetrain in the electric vehicle market, honestly. I mean, it's a revelation. Now, let's talk about lower pricing. You know, the uh, uh, the the uh, cyber truck they got uh, I don't know six hundred thousand pre-orders who knows how many will come to fruition, but they've got a lower end pricing on that of like forty k. I just want to remind everybody when Tesla announced the Model Three and they were taking orders they said thirty k there's going to be a thirty k Model Three never happened I mean. Remember, there was like hidden on the website. You could have ordered one. Nobody even knows how many they sold. They took it off completely now. I'm going to predict right now that's going to be the same thing with the Cybertruck. Uh, they have already said, I believe the Cybertruck uh, they've announced. And again, I did uh, did a video on this. You can look at uh, uh, which one will be forced, uh, Ford, Rivian, or, or, or Lordstown. It goes into this. But... Uh, they, I believe they've already announced they're going to start with the expensive models first. And then my prediction, 
they'll never get around to making a cheaper one. It'll never. It, it's vaporware, my opinion. That's the Cybertruck, vaporware. The 40K Cybertruck, never going to happen, my opinion. Okay, now they've been talking about, oh, letters of intent. How many orders do you have? I got to tell you, I want to do a video just on this. Uh, you know, I've done some, just some basic research. This, this is, this is a massive, this is, uh, these fleet sales just for municipalities. I mean, they want an electric pickup truck. A lot of municipalities uh, in the United States, they have mandates to go electric. Okay, they don't want a cyber truck. They don't want a seventy thousand dollar rivian. They want a work truck. Okay. They want the Lordstown motor. By the way, Ford's fleet sales for the F-150, oddly enough, down 26% this year uh, over the last 12 months or whatever. Nobody's buying an F-150. And they ran out of the chips uh, to make the engine controls on the gas-powered uh, F-150. Now they even get worse mileage. No one's buying them. That's the number one uh, fleet vehicle. So that's a distinct opening for Lordstown. But... Um, they do not want the Cybertruck form factor. Uh, and, you know, tool racks won't fit on it and so on. I'm sure they'll be aftermarket things, but they want a truck. You know what I mean? And uh, the Lordstown uh, Endurance really, really fits these municipalities. And, you know, the municipalities can't put in letters of intent and all this. So, And uh, another interesting thing I learned is uh, uh, on the municipalities, uh, I did not know this. Many states have anti-idling laws. You're not allowed to idle a truck for more than five minutes and in a lot of places. And this is mostly de uh, describes uh, diesel trucks. But, you know, you're not supposed to idle a truck. Now, l let me just tell you. I'm going to tell you a quick story here. They were doing some electrical pair repairs uh, by where I lived. And I had a chance to watch these guys do this. And they have a crew of trucks that come out and they have a bucket truck and they have a crate truck and they have a trailer with a big spool of wire, or whatever. And then the, the manager shows up and uh, he's got a pickup truck. And this is not just the manager. This is the other trucks do this too, on and off. But the manager, he shows up, the project manager, whatever, he, he shows up with a pickup truck, right? And it's got a big screen in it, like a police car. And it's got a radio, and it's got all this stuff in it. You know what I mean? And I think he hooked some kind of device up, uh, maybe a fan that was blowing air into the manhole they were working in underground or whatever. And one of the cool things was uh, this guy gets out of the truck with a laptop, and he opens it up, and I happen to see the screen of the laptop. This laptop had a wireframe drawing of it, of the street, of every building, accurately drawn in 3D wireframe above the ground and a full 3D schematic below the ground of every power line, sewer, everything. It was amazing. And, and you know, and it was like x-ray vision. As he walked around, it would change. It was the most amazing thing, the detailed information they have. But getting back to the story, the thing is, they would work for hours on this thing. They would never shut this pickup truck off. And this is the same with a lot of power companies. And, you know, they say Duke Energy is going to order these trucks. They are mandated by safety mandates. And when they run bucket trucks and other things, anything that has hydraulics or that needs a power takeoff for a tool or a fan or a light or whatever, they are mandated by their safety requirements to keep these trucks idling the entire time that project is underway. And this pickup truck, and the other trucks would idle on and on. But this pickup truck, I don't know why. I don't Like I said, I don't know. This guy was running a fan or what. Or maybe he needed to make sure the radio was running so that he could call for help if somebody got hurt. Never turned it off. These electric vehicles will stop all that. It's amazing. Just the demand. Just in that one application. And again, the form fast factor of the Lordstown Endurance is what these municipalities want. Uh, anyway, let's get, let's get back to the slide. Uh, 60 beta builds, they're testing. Some of them are going to be crash tested. Some are going to go to customers for feedback. Some are going to go on sales calls. Um, 
they want an affordable EV pickup option, uh, which is what they're going for, 52K right now. It's evolving. Uh, again, I don't. I think the low-cost Cybertruck is vaporware. You can quote me on that. Rivian, forget it. It's not even. I don't even think you can get one for less than 70K. Uh, September 2021, which is a couple months away, they're going to be the release. Again, the, the municipalities really want this truck. And right now, and again, this is a forecast, and, you know, all these haters and these shorters, I'm just going to say, this is some what some of my research has come up with of internal forecasts they have for demand, uh, let's say, for the first year or the first first production run or the first couple production runs. I'm not sure exactly the time frame. This may be municipal trucks, 250,000 to 400,000 vehicles. I, you know, people are so underestimating uh, this truck in its capabilities and in the demand for this truck. Unbelievable. Anyway, let's just move on to the next slide here. Uh, I think I got a couple of videos coming up and I think they're gonna start automatically. Okay, this is MXUX. I'm gonna play this video at double speed. This is the Lordstown plant making Chevy Cruises and this is the vehicle they made uh, before they made the Endurance. And I just, I don't think anybody has an idea of just how complex and big this uh, facility is and this plan is and actually what it takes to really build a vehicle so let's just start this it's at double speed now you see they start with rolls of steel and then it's uh, stamping and this is all the same equipment that Lordstown Motors has and now they're putting the bodies together and now they're dunking the bodies for the uh, paint application they're applying sealant uh, to the bodies there and uh, they're the robots are painting it then the bodies come down uh the trim uh what they call the trim line that's what that is they put the dashes and the seats and uh, everything into the bodies as you can see here and then uh now look how big that line is people don't people don't get it they think this is a hoax i mean there's a robot's putting the seats in there's a robot putting the glass in. And again, Lordstown has all the same equipment as in place during Lordstown. And look at the immensity of this place. Look at the complexity. It's like the uh, Star Wars movie. Now, the, the, the ice engine line, they don't need. They're, they're putting their electric motor line in there and their battery assembly plant in there, where this is. And it's supposed to be like a clean room in there now. And... Uh, now, this girl here, she's fastening uh, the drivetrain in. Uh, but anyway, then there's the final car. Now, look how long that line is. Look look how gigantic this plant is. And again, this is, this is just coming in sheets of steel. And they used to roll one of these cars off the line a minute. One a minute. 24-7, 365. Okay, so... That's an inter oh, sorry phone call. That's an interesting. Uh, now that gives you an idea of what this plant was doing right before Lordstown bought it, and Lordstown got it less than a year ago. All this equipment was still warm. It's all in place, and uh, we're going to go to the next video here if I can get it to start right, and it's just going to be a current video of uh, the beta production at Lordstown. Okay, this is the latest video from Lordstown 316 showing the same plant building the beta builds of the truck that the short sellers say they can't build. There's the floor pan, there's the robots. This is the same line that was in the cruise line. This is the same robots. Everything's been reprogrammed for this truck. And you can see everything's working fine oh it's not working they can't build them well these are the beta builds they're building 80 of these uh they're very close on these they're still doing changes to the specs but uh this is the car i mean this is the truck and you can see here uh, now this is the roof going on i'm just going to pause it right here this roof is going on and this is a very special procedure. They're tacking it in place. The robots are using spot welds. You're going to see in the next video that plays, they have a laser welding on the roof. 
And uh, Schmidt, the president of Lordstown, pointed out specifically what a big deal this is. It is cutting edge, state-of-the-art technology, extremely expensive. Nobody else uses it. And I can tell you from my own research, you know who else uses this uh, laser welding technique? Rolls-Royce does on the roof of the Rolls-Royce. So let's just play this. And you can see, now watch it. It goes by pretty quickly here. But these are lasers welding the seams on the roof. Impressive. Okay, it's coming up here. There you go. Pretty cool. Now, here's the non-existent battery plant that, what's his name, Hindenburg says they don't have. There they are. There's a battery pack they say they can't make. All right. That's it. That's the, I mean, I don't know what else you need to see. September, they're on record. Okay, guys, uh, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I'm going to put a link, uh, an informational link on the top of these videos if I can or at the end of these videos to my other Lordstown Motors videos. I don't know. I have four or five. If you watch them, you can understand uh, there's very in-depth explanations there, these hub motors uh, especially, which uh, people can't seem to, to grasp. And it, it was a hard concept for me to grasp because it's so unique. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. That's it gone on long enough. Uh, thanks for watching. Creepy music about to start.